Hi, this is Eric Keller for ZBrush Jewelry Workshop. In this video, we're going to continue exploring ZBrush Core 2021, which is the light version of ZBrush. And we're going to explore some more advanced, uh, slightly more advanced techniques. We're going to make a Dumbo octopus ring, and we're going to use Z spheres as a way to start the geometry for our ring. So if you're not familiar with the Dumbo octopus, it's just about the cutest octopus in the world. You've probably seen pictures of it online, but if you do a image search for Dumbo octopus, it's hard to believe that this is a real thing, but it's a real thing and they're super cute and I think would be a great subject for a ring because octopus rings are really cool. And uh, so why not? It's a good way to learn some ZBrush cores. So let's start with the discussion of what Z-spheres are. So Z-spheres are a unique modeling tool that you only find in ZBrush and ZBrush core. Uh, it's a very interesting way to work. You essentially build an armature and then convert the armature into geometry, which you can then sculpt. There's a couple ways to get a Z-sphere. You can go into Lightbox in the project directory and double click on the zsphere.zpr to load the Z-sphere project. But it doesn't matter if you're in another project and you want to use Z-spheres. So let's say I have the dog ZPR project open. You can also find Z-spheres here in the toolkit already. So it doesn't matter which way you start, whichever you prefer. Let's keep things simple. Go into Lightbox and start the Z-Sphere project. I'm going to turn off uh, Perspective. And we're going to be creating an octopus. So an octopus has eight arms. So this sounds like a good opportunity to use some radial symmetry. So I'm going to go into the Transform uh, palette here. And I want to activate symmetry. So I'm going to set the symmetry on the Y axis and I'm going to turn X off. And I'm going to turn on R for radial. It's already set to eight by default because I guess somebody over at Pixelogic really loves octopuses or maybe they really love spiders. It's hard to say. But either way, we already have this set to eight, so we're good to go. So as I hover over the Z sphere, you can see I have these little dots. There's eight of them. And just like any other radial symmetry in ZBrush, if I start to draw, you can see it will create eight versions of it, evenly spaced. I'm going to press Control Z to undo that. Uh, as you'll notice, as I hover over the Z sphere, um, sometimes the little dots turn green and sometimes they're red. The green usually indicates kind of an ideal place to add a Z sphere. So I'm going to kind of try and align this with the grid a little bit. Get those things so that they're green. It's not the end of the world if you don't get it exact, just close enough. And then I'm just going to start drawing to drag out these Z-spheres. So I'm in draw mode right now. Now, if I wanted to, I could press W to switch to move. Notice when I'm using move in Z-sphere mode, it doesn't activate the gizmo, which it normally does for other types of objects. Instead, you're in a kind of a special version of move that is specific to z-spheres. So if I drag on these z-spheres, it's going to pull them out, right? So I have kind of like an eight-armed starfish here. Uh, not exactly what I want. This kind of cone thing is not really, doesn't lend itself to tentacles very well. So I'm going to undo that. Control Z to undo. Uh, press Q to switch back to draw. I'm going to do a special trick that will make creating tentacles a lot easier. I'm going to start pulling on these z-spheres to draw out a new z-sphere because I have draw mode on. And before I let go, I'm going to hold the shift key. And when I hold the shift key like that, the new z-sphere snaps to the same scale as its parent. The next thing I'm going to do is before I pull this out, I'm going to lower my draw size because it's easier to work with z-spheres when you have a very small draw size. That way you're not accidentally selecting neighboring z-spheres. I'm going to press W for move and pull these out. And if I hold the shift key while I pull them out, they should come straight out. So that's looking a bit more like some tentacles that I can deal with. Of course, I kind of have this guy upside down. You can tell from the gnome in here. So let's switch to like this. Press W for move and just pull these guys straight down. And let's pull their roots down as well. So I'm going to select these z-spheres and move them down. So you can see, you can move them like that. Try and keep them in line as best as possible. Okay, now we're starting to look like... Now let's add a head. So I'm going to go into the transform palette, turn off radial symmetry, turn off y symmetry, and turn on x symmetry. 
So we have our standard X symmetry now. And I'm going to press Q for draw and then start drawing out a new Z sphere. Press W for move, go to a side view, and kind of pull this out a little bit. So now we have something that looks a bit like an octopus. I want to point something out real quick. I'm going to undo that. So control Z a couple times undo it. So we're back to this state. So when I'm in draw mode and I have X symmetry on and I want to add a Z sphere that's right on that center line, you see how when I'm dragging over here, as I get closer to that center axis on the X axis, they kind of snap together and they turn green. So this snapping together while draw mode is on is letting you know that if you want to just do one Z sphere right in the middle, that's where you want to draw it. So then I can draw this out and I'm confident that I just have one Z sphere. One thing you have to be careful of, let me undo that real quick, is sometimes with Z spheres it's easy to get two Z spheres that are very close together and in some cases even overlapping. So, and that could cause problems when you're converting into geometry. You can see this gray shading here is just letting you know that that's a problem. But sometimes it's not always that obvious. So you want to be careful whenever adding you know, a Z-sphere on the center line when you have X symmetry active, make sure while you're in draw mode that you snap these two points together in the middle and then start drawing your Z-sphere. So basically what we're doing is we're building out this simple armature here using these Z-spheres. And the Z-spheres are nice because they're very simple. As you can see, I'm going to press W for move and then just click on these gray Z-spheres right here. But the basic idea behind the way Z-spheres work is you have a parent Z-sphere and one or more child Z-spheres. So this Z-sphere is the child of this one, which was our starting Z-sphere. And these Z-spheres right here are also the child of this one. And then these Z-spheres at the end are the child of this Z-sphere. So it's a very uh, simple hierarchy. And uh, the idea is, is that as you add Z-spheres to the armature, you can move, scale, and rotate them to create the shape of your object. And then when you're ready, you can convert the object into geometry. The cool thing about Z-spheres is that as you're working and building out your armature, you can preview what the geometry is going to look like by simply pressing the A hotkey. So if I press A, now we see a skin over the Z-sphere. I'm going to turn on the polyframe button right here so we can take a closer look at the skin. If we zoom in, you notice this topology looks an awful lot like a typical Dynamesh topology. In other words, all the points are kind of evenly distributed over the entire surface but they don't follow like the edge flow of the surface. They're just basically a skin stretched over the Z-spheres. I'm going to press A again to switch back to Z-sphere mode. You can also see that when I have the polyframe button on, you can see how the Z-spheres automatically create polygroups, which is a very useful feature, as we'll see. Um, if I go into the tool palette, this adaptive skin uh, sub-palette here only appears when you're working with Z-spheres. So if I expand this, we can see there's some options. If I press this preview button, that's the same thing as hitting that A hotkey. So A toggles this preview button on or off. So I'm gonna to toggle this off. So we're back to Z-sphere mode. And I wanna pay attention to this Dynamesh resolution and the density slider. So if I set the density slider to one and press A, uh, you can see that we have more of a faceted kind of look to our geometry. Let's press A again. To turn that off and this time I'm going to set Dynamesh resolution by default to 256 I'm going to set it all the way down to zero and press A and now what we see looks more like a typical polygon model in this case there is a bit more of an edge flow it's not a perfect edge flow but there is a bit more of an edge flow that follows the surface and we pretty much have all quads there's no triangles in this so this density slider if I start moving this up you can see that it looks smoother it looks just like if we just created a polygon mesh and then subdivided it using the subdivide button or the divide button, right? The higher we make this, the smoother our, ge our geometry. If the Dynamesh resolution is in any setting other than zero, if I start to move this up, let's say I'll put it to like 32 and press A, press A to go back to Z-sphere mode, press A again to see the Dynamesh version, you could see it's like a low resolution Dynamesh. So it gives you an idea of how these sliders to work. If you want to have your model converted directly to Dynamesh, then set your Dynamesh resolution to anything higher than zero. 
If on the other hand, you don't want to use Dynamesh, and you want something that looks more like regular geometry, then set Dynamesh to zero, and then you can play with this density slider to determine you know, the subdivisions of the model once you convert it into geometry. Okay, so then the question becomes, why would you want to choose Dynamesh versus subdivided geometry? What are the advantages, disadvantages? There's no real answer to that question. And it's almost, which do you like better for whatever job that you're trying to do? Because you can always, you know, by using Dynamesh and ZRemesher, even in ZBrush Core, you can flip between both modes very easily back and forth. So we really kind of just want to figure out or take your best guess of what you think is going to work well. When first blocking out the geometry, I like to use kind of more of a standard geometry as opposed to Dynamesh, but I probably will convert this to Dynamesh at some point, maybe later on, just to fuse different parts together. But for now, I'm going to set preview density down to one and stick with this type of geometry. Uh, there's a few other things though I want to add to this model before I convert it to geometry and start sculpting away. Uh, my general philosophy towards um, Z-spheres, or working with Z-spheres, and it, it varies from one artist to the other. There's no, no rules in this. But I like to use just a few Z-spheres just to block out the basic geometry and get something started. And I can always add more stuff later on using sculpting tools, Dynamesh, whatever. But I'm going to keep it simple so there's less things to worry about. Okay, so I'm going to press A to switch out of this preview. Press Q to switch back to draw mode. And I'm still working with Z-spheres here, so I want to add some eyes. So, as you notice, if I click on a connecting Z-sphere while I'm in draw mode, it converts that connecting Z-sphere into a regular Z-sphere. You see how this bone icon has been split? I'll do Control-Z to undo it. Do it again, you can see how it's split. And if I press the W, I can now move this one independently of the others. I'm going to do something like that and then press Q for draw mode. And I'm gonna draw a couple spheres right here. Press A just to see what that looks like. It's okay, it's not great. I'm gonna draw another one, hold shift. So it snaps and then press A. I kinda of like that better. You see how it has that edge loop around the eye? I think that works a little bit better. And I'm gonna keep the legs fairly short on this. So let's start with that as our basic octopus sculpting uh, starter and of course this is always a good time to save so let's save this I'm going to save it I'm going to save it as Dumbo octopus 01.zpr and overwrite what I already have now I'm in preview mode right now and I can tell I'm in preview mode because every time I press a I switch back to Z spheres it's tempting to switch to preview mode and start sculpting away. But this is usually can be a really bad idea because if you switch back to Z-sphere mode and then switch back to sculpting mode, a lot of times you'll lose those changes or sometimes it'll screw up the model. So what I prefer to do, I'm going to press Control Z and undo a few times, is, is I'm going to keep this as a Z-sphere model. I'm going to choose Make Adaptive Skin. And when I do that, if we go to the toolbox, we can see here's my Z-sphere. Here's my Z-sphere octopus right here. But this one called Skin Z-sphere 1, that's my actual geometry. And that's what I'm going to sculpt on. So I'll select that. You can see it has its polygroups and everything. And I'm going to press Control D a couple times to divide it. Let's switch to another material. Say something like green metallic. And I'm going to start sculpting. So I'm not going to worry about the ring part so much right now. I'm just going to worry about sculpting a nice Dumbo octopus. And then later on, I'll bring in the ring and we'll pose it so that it's wrapped around the ring in some kind of interesting and artistic manner. But at least now we have a model started. So I'm going to save this as Dumbo Octopus 02.zpr. This will save both the original Z-Sphere armature and the mesh in one project. So it's nice because I can always go back to the Z-sphere and edit this and use it for something else like a squid or a different type of octopus or whatever. A great way to get to know Z-sphere is better is to go into Lightbox and go into the Z-sphere folder. So there's a bunch of example projects in here. So I'll double click on the scorpion to load it. I'm not gonna save this, but you can see now I have a little scorpion Z-sphere armature and I'll switch to rotate 
Rotate is a great way to pose the model. So I can start rotating these connectors, Z spheres, and changing the model around. Or you could turn on draw and start adding things and changing it, making it your own special kind of crazy creature. And if you take a look at Lightbox, there's a whole bunch of these. So there's a bunch in the Z Sphere folder. If I go into projects, there's also mannequins, which has a whole bunch of pre made mannequins. And then they've also added this Z Zoo, which is just a whole bunch of Z Sphere critters that you can play with. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out about these models, let's take a look at the tarantula here. So I'll load this. You'll notice that the connector Z spheres, actually these doesn't look like Z spheres at all. It looks like a bunch of geometry. But if I switch on rotate, I can pose them just like Z spheres. You can see we have that sort of joint thing going on here. So what's going on here? Um, they've used a clever trick here to replace the connecting Z spheres with custom geometry. And you can do this too. So if I go into my palette here, I'm going to select my ring 3D. This is a parametric model, so it's not actually geometry. Uh, I'm going to click on Make Polymesh 3D, which converts it to an actual polygon object called PM3D Ring 3D. So that's now a regular piece of geometry which you can sculpt. Let's switch over to the regular Z sphere here, and I'm going to press Q for draw and just add some Z spheres. And press W for move and move these out. And I'm going to select one of these connecting Z spheres here and go into adaptive skin. I'm going to turn on use classic skinning and choose insert connector mesh. And I'll select that ring 3D that I just made and it replaces this with that geometry. It still kind of behaves like a, a, a Z sphere. So if I switch to rotate, you can say I can rotate these around. I'll select this one, insert connector mesh. And now I have a ring right there. I'll select this geometry right here and choose insert local mesh, same thing. And that's going to replace that Z sphere with the, um, with the ring as well. So let's see if I can get these both. Yeah, I think it's either one or the other, but you can also convert this into geometry. If I press a, it's going to do a, a Z sphere adaptive skin or DynaMesh preview. So you can see this will be converted into a Dynamesh, which you can then sculpt, just like a regular Z sphere. But that's what they're doing with a lot of these mannequins in the Z Zoo, like our little kitty cat here. They've just replaced the connector meshes with custom geometry. If I press A, you can see that this is going to be converted into geometry, and it's going to look just like that. So there's another way you can kind of use the power of Z spheres to create some really interesting stuff. For jewelry, this could be especially useful because you could bring in actual like, you know, little flourishes or other parts to, to your jewelry and replace Z sphere connector spheres with that and then create like a string of uh, rings or something like that. So lots of interesting creative potential there. But that's Z spheres.